Hi, I'm Anne Marie Navarre. I'm an associate professor of cardiology in the Division of Cardiology at UT Southwestern Medical Center in Dallas. I am so pleased to be here with our spotlighted cardiologist today. This is Dr. Habiba Garuba. Dr. Garuba is an assistant professor at the University of Ottawa in the Division of Cardiology at Ottawa Hospital. Dr. Garuba, thanks for joining us today. I was hoping maybe you could start by just telling us a little bit about yourself. Thanks, Dr. Navar. Thank you for having me here today. Um, so as already mentioned, I'm a cardiologist. I'm a general cardiologist and echocardiographer at the Ottawa Hospital and also an associate professor in the Faculty of Medicine at uh, University of Ottawa. Um, my clinical areas of interest here are um, cardio-obstetrics, cardio-oncology, um, structural heart disease, um, and also uh, cardiovascular disease management in resource-limited settings, or what's otherwise known as global health cardiology. I'm um, really happy CCS has decided to do these uh, spotlight editions and uh, looking forward to the conversation. Well, you know, let's start off with maybe my favorite area of research is cardiovascular prevention. And we hear a lot about cardio-obstetrics and thinking about how we care women with complicated uh, heart disease during pregnancy, but we're learning more and more about the implications of what happens during pregnancy and what's revealed about a woman during pregnancy and future cardiovascular risk. So talk to us a little bit about your work and your interest in that sort of intersection between prevention and cardioobstetrics. Yeah, yeah. So cardioobstetrics is a field that has become, um, I guess, much more um, of a niche slash discrete or distinct field from other fields of cardiology in the last few years. Um, we've come to understand that there is a much higher risk of cardiovascular disease associated with women who experience hypertensive disorders of pregnancy um, or pregnancy associated vascular complications. Um, the field of cardiobstetrics used to be almost limited to um, patients who had congenital heart disease and were pregnant with congenital heart disease. But as um, maternal ages increase and as the prevalence of uh, preeclampsia, gestational diabetes, uh, gestational hypertension, um, uh, et cetera, increases, we do see that downstream um, patients are at increased risk. And um, it becomes important to incorporate these in our traditional models of assessing or risk stratifying patients with cardiovascular disease. Um, what's particularly of note is that pregnancy related complications such as these um, have a higher prevalence among black women in particular, which is you know, an area of interest to me as well. So um, here at the Ottawa Hospital, actually at the University of Ottawa Heart Institute, which is also um, part of the Ottawa Hospital umbrella, um, a, a program was created called the IMPROVE program, which targets um, postpartum vascular events uh, for women who have experienced any of these pregnancy related uh, hypertensive disorders. And the goal behind that program is to try to um, mitigate future risk. So any of these patients who've had these complications get referred to this program. And it's a program that um, also uh, works together with the, de the Department of um, the Division of Cardiac Prevention and Rehabilitation and provides cardiac risk stratification lifestyle changes, dietary changes, coaching and monitoring, um, uh, blood pressure management, diabetes education and management, um, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and the whole goal is to reduce future risk. Um, you know, the idea, and I think this program is fantastic for capturing women um, uh, who have already developed these complications with the goal for secondary prevention. What I'm interested, you know, in understanding and knowing is how we can target women who actually are at risk even before these events happen. Um, and I understand prevention is one of your areas of uh, expertise. So I would love to get you know, your thoughts on how we can incorporate cardiovascular risk profiles, even as part of ordinary regular pregnancy management, um, how we can screen these women um, even prior to the development of these complications further down the line. You know, I think you're, it's fortunate that you have a hopefully very long career ahead because there's a lot of work to be done here. Um, we know that a lot of this starts with early detection, that you know, treating uh, hypertension as soon as it's detected rather than waiting until it's you know, very uncontrolled is, is part of this. Um, but even, and as you mentioned, you know, that after postpartum you know, cardiovascular prevention really being key, 
it's going to be hard for us to do any real targeting and prevention of these complications if we're not even able to capture them completely right now. And so one of the challenges that we face is around diagnosis and capturing and recording these um, these different diseases and complications so that we can then refine our risk models and start to develop the types of prediction tools to see who may be most at risk. I'm also optimistic that we're going to have better home monitoring tools, home blood pressure, even potentially other home lab-based tests in the future that can help us um, identify the early onset of these complications. But certainly a lot of, of work to do, and I'm really thrilled that you're in this space. I, I want to pivot though, but another interest that you mentioned is cardiovascular disease in resource limited settings. And this sort of complements um, some of the, the work you talked about related to racial disparities and pregnancy outcomes. You know, there's a lot of uh, challenges in resource limited settings. So tell me a little bit about your work and interest in this space and, and what risk factors are you most interested in when it relates to under resourced areas? Yeah, yeah. So um, great question. So um, my interest in cardiac disease in resource limited settings um, comes about from an experience that I had with a uh, an elective that I did actually in Nigeria. So um, I traveled to Nigeria about maybe three or four years ago now to do an elective in one of the public hospitals in the capital city. And the goal there was to understand what cardiac disease management looked like in that in that setting. And you know, one of the things that I actually it was a very enriching experience, and I learned quite a ton in the short time that I was there. But um, uh, one of the things that struck me the most is um, really great physicians practicing in settings where they are limited by um, uh, a healthcare system that is not as robust, perhaps, as what we may have enjoy in Canada or in the United States. Um, and as well, a lot of challenge with, he with healthcare illiteracy among um, some of the patients, um, certain misconceptions around um, uh, uh, chronic disease being fixed potentially once treatment is initiated um, and certain risk factors being quite difficult to mitigate. So hypertension really was the biggest risk factor and um, hypertension tended to occur at much earlier ages among this population than we would potentially otherwise see here in Canada, tended to be more, much more aggressive much more treatment resistant. And as you know, the Black or the African-American population in the United States um, tends to be less sensitive to medications that impact the renin-angiotensin-aldosterone system when it comes to hypertension management. Um, uh, dietary modifications also were uh, sometimes a little bit difficult to address given certain, um, you know, um, uh, certain cultural norms around food, et cetera. So some of those things were, were a little bit challenging, but I did find hypertension was one of the biggest risk factors. But, you know, that, um, that was a completely very different what I practice on a day-to-day -day basis here. However, there are parallels even in Canada with our population um, uh, a little further up north. So in some of the, um, at the University of Ottawa Heart Institute, Cardiology outreach is done several times a year um, in Iqaluit, which is a city up north um, uh, that is mostly populated with our indigenous population, where some of the risk factors that exist in other parts of the world um, are the same, are you know similar there. And um, there are huge resource limitations and great disparities in health between the northern population here in the province of Ontario and other parts of Canada. So there are some parallels there that I saw um, uh, between my experience in Nigeria, I, ironically enough, and some of the things that I experienced here. But hypertension really was the biggest risk factor. And I know that's an area of you know, interest and expertise for you as well. So how do you manage that within um, your practice um, at UT? Well, you know, I think it's a challenge, but a lot of the things that you mentioned are really important that even within... Um, within a population that may seem to be higher resourced, every individual has their own challenges and barriers, um, be it access to food, access to medications, challenges with medication adherence, responsiveness to therapies. So, you know, at a, as a clinician, it's about really understanding the patient and figuring out what's the tailor-based approach for them. 
Um, I could talk to you all day long about the great work you're doing and think it's just really exciting. And I love to hear how the different areas that you're working in overlap. I wanna thank uh, CCS for the opportunity to talk with you and thought maybe we could just wrap with um, one final question for you, which is we're spotlighting the next generation, but there's another generation below us as well. So what would you tell somebody five or 10 years below you that wants to be an academic cardiologist? Uh, I would probably say to them, um, take whatever opportunities are uh, given to you that align with your future goals. And if those opportunities don't present themselves to you, create those opportunities. So that's, that's what I would say. Well, wonderful. All right. Thanks to CCS and thanks for joining us. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.